All right, so in this video, what we're gonna talk about is the plant PAX uh, P underscore PF uh, 52X. Now, what we're gonna do here is show you, I've incorporated some controls to actually show you this actually working live with the actual finite state machine that we built in our 30 day YouTube challenge, which is our servo challenge that we did over here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start the system so you can see it and see it working. Um, you can actually see both of the wheels actually turning right now and they do respond to the actual um, speed pot that we have, right? So I can speed both of these up and you can easily see that both of them will speed up. Now I can keep speeding them up and have them running as fast as I would like to have them running and all the virtual axes on the screen work at the same time as well. So let's quickly talk about how the logic is working. So let's shut this down right quick and I'll show you what I did to actually get this done. Now first, I want you to get the comprehension of when this, when you upload the, the, the plant PX, uh, or the plant packs, I call it plant packs, uh, but it's officially called plant PAX. Um, but when it comes to uh, uploading this, you're gonna get a bunch of default things. So you need to, if you wanna use this as a program scope, or program used in your program where you can actually control it, uh, rather than just a standard operating uh, control, just like I shared in my prior videos, what you need to do is you need to go in here to this actual program or this actual tab right here, and you can highlight different uh, visual visual effects. And what you want to do with these visual effects, what they're going to do is they're going to enable different features inside of the program. So inside of the actual AOI yourself. So what I did is if you come in, you can see um, I showed you the simulate in the last video, so if you haven't seen that, go check that video out. You can see the simulate that we did on the actual um, control and the simulate on the actual HMI. But what I want to show you here is, uh, like right here, I've showed, I've tied in my HMI reset, HMI reset to here. Uh, I cut this on, cut that on, or cut it off. Like if I cut that on, this uh, unlock right here, and I hit right here, the unlock will pop right here. So if I cut that off, the unlock, unlock will not show anymore. So you can show what you want to be able to control, like forward and reverse. If I wanted this to work in forward or reverse, I could actually show that as well. You know, so with different pins, I can show different things. As a matter of fact, that's a good thing we can do in this video is uh, show this working in forward and reverse. Now standard operating controls, again, you can show those as well. I'm showing a couple of those. But standardly, when you see this, if you've, if you've seen the prior videos, when you upload and use this AOI, you're not going to have any of this stuff because it's generally made to be used. Um, well, when it is used, it is used uh, when it's first implemented. It's a dry feature that is used directly off the HMI. So uh, it will have a pop-up block that's used off the HMI that you can actually use for that. But again, when it comes to it, let's actually do that. Let's actually come in and put in the uh, forward and reverse. We'll, we'll change those too. So what we'll do, and we did a speed command. The uh, speed command is a rolling speed command, right? So we did our speed command off the last video that we talked about, and we showed that we did our standard speed controls um, up here on our 525. Now we're no longer controlling our 525 from up here because we have our routine uh, AFI'd for this block. And instead, we're powering, uh, we're enabling our JSRing this uh, con this trainer uh, underscore PF525 ladder, uh, which is down here. So what we're doing is coming down here, and this is just one single rung, right? We're copying the actual, we're copying the actual uh, drive down here, copying the drive parameter, the the. Uh, input word status right and then we're coming in down here and throwing it into the word status of that block now what we're doing here is calling the JSR for the actual function block then we're coming down you taking the exit out of the function block and we're telling it uh, we're masking we're doing a, a mask and we're masking it out to say we only care about so many words in our in, so many bits inside of this word for the command and then for the for the actual frequency, we're just giving the frequency out, right? So it's pretty simple. But uh, what I want to show you here is uh, using this forward and reverse. 
So let's just say, for instance, we want to run this in reverse. We're just going to put in a couple pins. We're not going to have like. So let's just say we want to run this in reverse. And we're going to run this in reverse. So we want to have. We want to put a zero into the forward. You don't necessarily have to put a zero into the forward, but it's in best practice that you do, so that it knows exactly what it's doing. So now, if we start it, the the motor should run in the opposite direction. So let's come in here and let's start it and we're going to slow it down completely so you can see it. So let's start it. And now it is running in the opposite direction. So now you can see that it is actually running in the opposite direction. So now if we stop it and we actually control this again, we change these these pins, we change the the uh, pins that we did we come over here we go into edit mode of our function block we put a one in here and put a zero in here and we assemble we go ahead and make sure all our edits are good so now we've changed to a forward command and now we're going to start again so now we're working in the opposite direction so you can easily change the, the the direction you're actually running on that block just by simply doing that, right? And that's by the program itself, and you can easily change the speed just like we're doing in this actual uh, up here. So all I'm doing is taking the speed command, multiply, multiplying it by 10, and then delivering it over here, and then the output's coming over here. So you can see that by the speed pot right here. So as you see, the faster I turn it, the faster the motor turns, and you can see the slower I indicate the speed to go, the slower the motor runs and the slower the servo motor runs. Right, so I actually have the servo, again the servo is actually right here. This is the servo wheel, and this is the standard motor, right? So we're actually have an encoder on the way, and we're got probably gonna do some encoder and stuff like that. We're gonna show how the encoder card works with the PowerFlex 525 and probably end up using some of this, these plant PAX uh, blocks and stuff like that with it as well. Again, I'm not showing the front end of the plant PAX as so much as the back end right now because what I'm doing is I'm controlling this with my finite state machine. And if you haven't seen that, right, if you haven't seen that video, or all the videos, the playlist of that, you can easily search on this channel and go to the uh, YouTube, I believe it's the 30 day servo challenge or 30 day servo build. And you can easily see that in that and see the whole playlist and see how I built the whole thing from start from start to finish. And you can see the whole thing, right? So the whole finite state machine, how everything was built and how everything we, you know, how we did all this stuff, right? So now coming back with doing standard controls, if I were to easily enable this and come back from here, and just change the AFI to here to here, then it would just simply go back to the controls that we had that we built on the prior video that showed how we built out the standard controls for the PowerFlex 525, right? But we were actually wanting to show the uh, the way the block worked for the plant PAX and how to control that from an actual program. So this right here would be, actually this right here is the start, right? So if we did the start, I come over here and we've seen it now it is actually started from here you can't do the yes we actually want to actually come down here to the I believe it's the main uh, not the main we want to use the virtual control uh, the virtual control will easily give us the start command and that's what we picked it from right so the start command from here to here and this is the e-stop and the stop all right so this is the stop commands that we I could have used the natural run command or the so if I wanted to I could actually use these as well um, so we could actually do that let's actually let's change this um, come in here let's change the way this is controlled real quick let's copy this get this tag so this is the uh, the machine run command and the other one is the machines machine run command off so what we can do in our block is we can do this I'll show you this real quick so you can easily see how to actually program this. So we're going to delete this and we're going to come down here, delete this, and we're going to add these pins back in. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to do this, 
and then I'm going to add in a knot, right? So why would I add in a knot? Um, it's really simple. And I'm going to put the speed command up here so I can get the stuff out of the way so I have room for the for the knot. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to come in here and say this is not. Then that would be a stop. And then this is a yes. Then that would be good. So we're going to run forward and then we're going to have if the machine run is told to come on it's going to run. If the machine is told to cut off or not on if that bit is not high then it's going to tell it to cut off so let's let's test that real quick and that way you can see that actually working so we'll do a simple start to our system again and we'll watch our motor running now it actually starts with the actual servo right so you see that it starts with the servo and it stops with the servo so if we look at it, the exact time the motor revolution starts for the servo, the exact time the motor revolution starts for the actual motor itself too. This is controlled by the PowerFlex 525. So you can actually see that. It's a lot better control. It's a lot, lot smoother transition for that. So I just wanted to show a simple way to come back and do uh, you know, some simple controls for that too. And we can come out here and, and now that this stuff is kind of I guess more uh, controlled I like to keep it keep the stuff as I guess as uh, itemized as possible and keep it uh, I guess looking as simple as possible so what I do is I, I like to have these come here add this just like this everything that's a one or a zero keep it up front and then keep all these just like this and it looks it looks so much better when you do it that way. You can just, it's, it's so much easier for somebody to come behind you and read this stuff. So uh, with all that said, hopefully you got to see some natural controls from the way things were and how things are done and easily changing stuff so that they can actually fluently work with other systems. So again, if you haven't seen those other videos, go check those out and um, you'll be glad you get to check it out and see how the, the, all this stuff was transitioned because we've been building upon week after week after week and growing from that. So I want to make sure that everybody gets a good, solid you know, learning and education from that if you do have the time and effort and apply yourself. And please note that learning and doing things like programming can be done in a thousand different ways, okay? A thousand different ways. If you can think it logically, you can do it. And again, if it's just a matter of doing it, right? So I may program it one way, you may program it a different way. It doesn't make it, it doesn't make it better or any different as long as we accomplish the same goal. That's all that matters. I just want to give a solid implementation and good knowledge pass to people that want to learn and want to grow so if you're one of those people that want to be like continuously learning growing on their potential and growing from what they're learning from continue you know feel free to subscribe and uh, like and share this video or, or either videos that we have on this channel because again we are just here to to help and show uh, again I try to stay within best practices of what I do again because I have 18 years in programming but I want to make sure that I do actually give that solid understanding that we all as programmers and technicians you know we do things different so logically if you can think it you can do it but with all that said I appreciate you guys watching the video and we'll see you on the next one